I'm Dana Cowley. Welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Today we're in the beautiful stateroom in Washington's capital of Olympia, and my guest today is Republican Representative Maureen Walsh from Walla Walla. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. This session, it's the short session where we're doing some tweaks on the budget, little adjustments before we tackle the big budget next year, and you're concerned about some policy that would really impact our most vulnerable citizens. What are you trying to accomplish this well, time? Well, my impetus in this place is always being concerned about policy. I'm not very political. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much policy oriented. And when I see things that we are doing in government that really just don't make sense, um, I like to kind of get in there and see if there isn't a way to fix that policy. And one of the specific policies that we have is through our Developmental Disabilities Administration. And it has to do with a requirement that some of our kids who are disabled have to try to work for nine months before they're able to obtain community access services, which is um, going out in the community, maybe doing volunteer work, potentially, um, you know, even going and feeding the ducks at the park, some way that they can get out and assimilate in our community, mm -hmm. be involved with our community. Yeah, have and some quality of life. Exactly. And frankly, that the bonus with that too is whoever is caring for that individual then gets that time as respite time so that they can kind of do the things that are important in their life that sometimes they have to put on the back burner because they are caring for an individual with disabilities. That is relentless and exhausting. Exactly. And it people is. People can break. You know, that, that's that's it's only right. So long you can go. That's right. So the policy that I think originally was very well intended. I mean, wouldn't it be a wonderful world if we could have all of our folks with disabilities out working in the community at our Fred Myers and our Thriftways? But that's not the reality. And so what happens is having to go through a nine month trial period for work, especially for a, um, a person with a disability where that disability is a little more severe or a higher acuity um, of, of a disability, I think it becomes a very difficult task and often leaves those, those folks feeling like they are a failure because they were unable to obtain a job or, or frankly even unable to perform a job. There are so many levels of disability and I think it's not very practical. And even if the parents don't think it's practical for a person to try to work first, I think that that is something that we should factor into a decision and we should allow the flexibility for families to choose a community access type of a um, uh, opportunity for that, for that person instead of having to go through this nine month work ordeal. Again, I'm not knocking work. I love to see the kid at the canned food warehouse who's got a disability working in there. I think that's great and I think if that can work, wonderful. But unfortunately, it's only working for the least disabled folks. And so we're sort of pulling off the cream of the crop, if you will, and, and, and that's great, get them jobs. But I think making a requirement for other people where it's really not very practical for them to be in a job situation, maybe even just based on their vulnerability of being out in public, I think it's really important that we that we offer the option that they can have community access. I think it is all about what you said, Dana, and that's quality of life. And I think that if, um, if a child can be out working or, or playing in the community or doing any kind of activities in the community, that brings them a quality of life. They get to socialize and interact and again, be part of our community. And I think that's really what we're looking for. So I'm working to try to balance that and make it so that community access can be an initial choice that a family can have for their loved one with a disability, just so they do have that opportunity. Well, yes, I think from um, being in news for 30 years and listening to what taxpayers want, I think taxpayers, first of all, want public safety. They need Absolutely. To know they're safe. Next, they want their education, want to make sure their kids are well educated. That's right. And I think probably third in the list would be taking care of our most vulnerable citizens. I think our society expects our lawmakers to do that with our tax dollars. I would agree. Use of the tax dollars. I so. would agree. So I don't want to leave folks languishing. I don't want to have folks sitting home watching television when in fact they could be doing something viable that again gives them, a, them an opportunity to be out in our communities and, and working and playing amongst us. I think that's a, that's a great thing. So that's a policy I'm working on. It's a, kind of a heavy lift. I'm getting a little pushback from the department. But I think maybe over the summer we'll have a little interim work plan and maybe try to work on some of these issues and come back next year with a bill that will 
provide that opportunity. Uh, well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here with us. My this pleasure. is Maureen Walsh from representing Walla Walla. I'm Dana Cowley, and this is Charter Local Edition Northwest in Olympia.